Hi, I'm Peter Cowan, the Bee Whisperer. It is Tuesday, October 22nd, I believe. A beautiful morning. And I am finally at the last yard for taking off my honey supers. I can't believe it's still the 22nd of October and I still have honey supers on my hive. As usual, the hive nearest the house, only 200 yards from the house, are the last ones I get to, the last time I'm getting my work done. Which also probably tells us is why I usually have mite issues and that's sort of this, this hive, this yard as well, because basically I just never get round to this one, having done all my other seven or eight yards. And uh, I just seem to run out of energy by the time I get to the one at home. But having said that, I did do, I'm getting to it. And we have had, I've had the excuse this year, we've had a very late, very strong honey flow, which gave these hives, I knew I wasn't gonna have to feed any of these hives because they are so full of honey from the honey flow we had this fall. It's been the best one we've seen in a long, long time. Anyway, uh, one of the things I wanted to follow up on was to see how my mite levels were. If you recall, I did some formic pro treatments this summer and my initial treatment in this yard still left me with quite a few mites. And so I tried a follow-up by reducing entrances in some of them and doing the mite treatment with the entrances partially blocked up. And I've been following through and I still had mites in some of these hives, but I've now sampled this one and that one which are the two that I've sampled the most during those uh, formic protests. And what, I've, uh, what I had done is after my second formic pro treatment, my mite levels had got down to better, but not good. I think I had a zero and a 10 amongst those hives, having been at 12 and 24 or something like that. But I followed up by putting Viroxan, which just arrived after that formic pro treatment. So I did Viroxan on all of my hives after that. Now Viroxan is not supposed to be great at bringing mite levels down, but it's supposed to hold them at low levels once they're already low. And my other yards were all at zeros or ones. I think I had one four amongst all of them. And so Viroxan, I was quite confident it was gonna be pretty good on those yards. The question was going to be, what would I find in this yard where I know I'd still had some mite levels left? Did it knock them down or not? And the answer from the sample that I've just been doing, the second sample, is I've just had two zeros in a row, which is the best this yard I've seen for some time. So far, it's early days, I'm going to do more samples today, but so far it looks like the Viroxan finished off mites, which were probably already weakened from two consecutive formic pro treatments, um, but uh, has held them down so far. I am absolutely delighted with that. Not only was the Viroxan very easy to use and very simple to use, we're now about day 40, day 50, somewhere like that in the Viroxan treatment, and I'm now rolling zeros. Uh, if that continues, this is most certainly a treatment I will be using in the future. But anyway, that, that was a real bonus for today. I would kind of thought in my mind's eye I may have trouble with this yard still. However, now I'm starting to take honey supers off. So in fact, this deep super of honey is coming off this hive here. It's on top of my escape board. I'll put another, I've got about seven or eight escape boards to use. I will be taking off as much honey as I can. Looks like roughly 15 or 20 supers will come out of this yard. Uh, so I'll set them up for them to come out, do some more samples and see where we go. Wish me luck. Ooh, it's a long morning. So, the uh, samples of a couple of zeros were very good. It didn't keep up as good as that. Uh, I got another couple of zeros, but I also got a two, a four, and a nine, and a six. So I've had to go around and put a few more mite treatments around. But otherwise, I think on the whole, 
a good, certainly a hold down of those mite levels. And uh, hopefully if we can keep the other yards at ones and zeros and ones and maybe twos, we should be good for the winter. I may yet go around with some oxalic acid vapor, depends what my other samples tell me. Anyway, the yards are now set up. I'm taking off a few less supers than I planned to, because I've actually found some brood in the hives. And so where I found brood upstairs, I gave another super of deep, just to make sure that things are not gonna be lightweight over the winter. I have more honey than I know what to do with, so left an extra deep on there, taking this stuff off. Left uh, another triple over there, and uh, taking a fair amount of honey off, so leaving a two deeps and a medium there. So what am I taking off? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 16 supers of which three or four are deep. Would be heavy to lift too. So the bees are looking great. I'm very pleased we had this warm spell to, uh, to do everything with. I'm gonna do a bit of feeding uh, for some of them just to make sure they fill in the spaces and that sort of thing. We've got brood emerging, so I wanna make sure that gets filled. So I'm gonna do some quick feeding and uh, I think they've all got enough honey to get through the winter. But as I've said before, sometimes it's the positioning of that honey. If you've got a frame of brood that uh, emerges and they don't get it back filled, you can end up with the bees getting isolation starvation by going to one side or the other of that frame of empty frame of brood, which never got back filled. And then in a cold spell, the bees cannot get across that empty frame of food, uh, empty frame where the brood was, but didn't get back filled. And so they get isolated from the food on the other side of the super and starve to death. So if I, I can take advantage of this warm spell, we've got three or four more days of warm weather. If I can get uh, them to take in a gallon or two and backfill as much as possible, it'll bridge those areas. Anyway, I need a break. I'm Peter Cowan, The Bee Whisperer. See you next time.